Engineers working in metal design a large variety of components. A finished piece of work often consists of a number of separate items joined together in one way or another. The way in which they're joined depends on the materials being used and the component being produced. Many are joined permanently by welding. The welded joint is ideally an extension of the two materials being joined. The weld will have similar characteristics to the parent metal. The best known form of welding is oxyacetylene. It's versatile and used in almost every fabricating shop in the world. It's absolutely essential in welding to work at a very high temperature. The source of the heat can be chemical, as in oxyacetylene, or frictional, or electrical. During the last 30 years, many new welding techniques have been developed to cater for highly specialized processes. The choice, which technique you use, depends on what you want to do and what you need to achieve. Arc welding, or manual metal arc welding, MMA, uses electricity to supply energy. The welder establishes an arc between the end of the electrode and the parent metal at the joint line. The heat generated melts the parent metal and the consumable electrode to form a weld pool. The welder keeps the arc gap constant by moving the electrode progressively towards the weld pool. This is protected by the molten flux surrounding the electrode. The current is controlled by a power supply unit on the right which gives a consistent electrode melting rate. When the electrode has been melted to a length of about 50 millimeters, the arc is extinguished. The solidified slag or flux is removed and welding continues with a fresh electrode. Manual arc welding is suitable for mild and medium carbon steels. It's flexible and portable. It may be slow, but it's still widely used in the construction industry, particularly in less accessible areas and in repairing plant. There are limitations. The flux can corrode aluminium, for example. Submerged arc welding, a mechanized technique, is much more satisfactory. An arc is created between the end of the bare wire electrode and the parent metal. As the electrode melts, it's fed into the arc by a servo-controlled motor. This matches the feed rate to the speed with which the electrode is melting, so keeping the arc length constant. The electrode and drive assembly is moved along the line of the joint by a mechanized traverse system. The arc operates under a layer of granular flux, hence the name, submerged arc. Some of the flux melts to give a protective blanket to the weld pool. The unmelted flux is recovered and reused. Because it has a good shielding system and is automated, high currents between 500 and 1,000 amps can be used. This makes submerged arc an ideal way to weld heavy materials. That's why it's found in most fabricating and welding shops. Because it's easy to weld long joints, large components, like this 20-ton girder for a bridge, are ideally suited to submerged arc welding. A number of alternative moving mechanisms can be used. The only requirement is that whatever the method selected, the complete welding head must move at a precisely controllable speed along the joint. Here, the whole assembly is moving on a motorized chassis, which is very simply controlled, making a weld which is easy to reproduce. This is essential, as up to 30 runs may be laid, one on top of the other, to build up an adequate joint.